All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tamba and welcome to our public Black Star Pan-African Community Meeting. And this meeting is about the subject that we have, uh, which is moving to Ghana and acquiring land uh, with uh, Black Star Pan-African Community. All right, so what I have set up for us is a newsletter that I sent out. I'm going to go through the newsletter and that's going to have all of our documentation and then I have a few other things on on the screen that I'm going to share. And the biggest thing is going to be the 60 acres uh, layout that is handwritten with the, uh, through the survey, but uh, the survey is working on digitalizing what I sent them just like when I sent them the, the, the draft of the uh, 15 acres. So these things are things that uh, I design and put together. And if anyone wants to just give suggestions and things like that, we're always open to it. Uh, so let me just get right into it and uh, start the uh, screen sharing. And now uh, we're just going to go through all we talk. All right, so perfect family. So this is our famous newsletter. And for everyone I have on the email list, I usually just uh, send this to MailChimp. And then also, if I have you on the contact list, sometimes I just resend it. Uh, so if anyone ever wants to just access these newsletters or just want to add themselves to the email list, what you do is uh, go directly to our website, africafortheafricans.org, and then look to the left side of the screen. And what you're going to see is newsletter on Africa tours and investment. Now, once you click on that link, it's gonna give you a list of all of the previous newsletters and all the newsletters are based on two things, Africa tours and investment. And the only investment that we have is the Black Star Pan-African community. And it also give you an option to add your name to the email list. So whenever we send out uh, newsletters, you get it. The newsletters is a nice organized way just to share details because what the newsletter is gonna have is just a bulk of information on there with links that you can click on, uh, social media links and things like that. And so that is our Black Star Pan-African Community logo. And there I have this nice colorful uh, map of uh, this Africa with all the different colors. And as you can see, the colors that stand out are red, black, green, and gold. The same colors that you see us are we're uh, culturally when we travel and do business. And most of the countries that I travel to in Africa they have the, the same uh, colors. So here's a picture of um, what I call the foundation for Black Star Pan-African community. When I organized uh, this operation in the summer of 2019, my goal was to reach out to my best person that I had in Ghana, which is my tour guide, uh, Kwabna Baka, which we've been working together from 2007. When, he, when I reached out to a tour group called Sun Seekers Tours, and I you know, set up a tour package uh, for them to help us with a tour guide bus and one or two other things. And this is the brother that was you know, assigned to us. And later on in the future, as time went by, as I build more relationship with him, we, you know, we started doing some more independent projects outside of a company that is a freelance um, tour guide for. So he's been our main tour guide the majority of times out of the uh, 20 tours we've done to Ghana. I wanna say he has been our tour guide for at least 17 of the times. So the reason why uh, Kwabna is, uh, is there, he's there to oversee everything. Uh, as a consultant, he's there to make sure everything on a project goes good, especially the legal paperwork, which is, which is the most important thing. And the thing that I spent the most time on, uh, legal paperwork or land survey, land search, and also just um, the legal connection that's uh, in the community. Uh, the surveyor, which is, we have a new surveyor. Uh, this was the original survey. Uh, but uh, he's been replaced uh, like a few, like about a few months into the project. Uh, so I don't have a picture with other surveyor with the, with the rest of us. So I still use this. And if I can just use a unique way to Photoshop, I'll just replace it. But I just title him as a surveyor because, you know, and what the surveyor does is a scope out our land. He does our 15 and 60 acre group survey. 
And then he also worked to get it submitted uh, to the Lands Commission because he's he also used to work for the Lands Commission, so which is always always helpful. And then all of our people have commission uh, connections with the Lands Commission that helps because when you're trying to do these projects and people want their paperwork, sometimes you just have to have the connections there. So he's definitely gonna do all individual uh, survey, which uh, he's been on top of uh, since we've been doing it. It's uh, you know it's serious work, and he also help with the layout. So. Appreciate our surveyor for this, doing those things. And we just have to just keep uh, building relationships and working um, with our brother. And, and myself uh, in the middle as the organizer and the person that's put the project together because I've, gr I've grown frustrated from 2006 to, 20, um, you know, to 2019 at that time, all those long years of working with so many different groups, the main groups being Fiancra, and also a group called Garvey Town, which was a group of uh, Black British people who literally thought they were the white version, excuse me, the Black version of the white um, masters, which is the, the British, uh, which I don't play those things. Um, just like we don't act like our oppressors here to try to oppress another group of Black people. Uh, so that didn't work out. Um, they asked me for help. And I came on the project as someone that knows a lot of people in Africa and the diaspora and somebody who have military organized professional business skills that can get things done. Uh, but I don't know if it was a level of just thought I was gonna take over their project or whatever it was, but um, you know, we, we, we did our best to work with them, but they just couldn't deliver. And the issue that I ultimately had was when they flipped it around and made it, made, and make it to where they didn't wanna give us legal paperwork for the land. They wanted to give us their bootleg paperwork. So I tell them now, anything that you give us, it has to be registered with the courts of Ghana and the Lands Commission. And that's what you'll see when you get your individual survey and deed. These are legal documents that we have for you to where you can go build your home. And then that is your legal land. No one can take it from you. And if you don't want it and you want to give it away or, or sell it, it's all up to you. Uh, so that is the main purpose of just taking control of the situation because I, I've gotten tired of this. So many of us who talk a lot about, oh, we're going to do this for the DAS. We're going to build this and build this. And nothing has happened. So in a short period of time that I started doing this project and uh, for the last two and a half years, we have literally been able to accomplish a whole lot. Number one, we have a group of 55 plus people. I mean, it's hard to get one or two people to go in on you with a land deal. So the way you, you, we organize this is by putting together organized information. So the organized information is what you're gonna see on this newsletter and also what you're gonna see on the social media networks and also what you're gonna see on our website, africaforafricans.org. Now the chief uh, in the Kente Clot, uh, Nana Haiti, uh, just a serious, good brother, and he's about his business. What he wants is he wants to see more Africans from the diaspora uh, come back to Ghana or connect with Ghana to where they can take part into investment projects. So he has been holding the land in his community uh, for us and it's based on our research with uh, our attorney right there in the blue, uh, Richard Lapo and Kwabna Baka. Uh, they were assigned to reach out to Nana Haiti. Uh, I you know, hired both of them as paid consultant and, and paid attorney to literally uh, reach out to Nana Haiti because when you're approaching a chief, you can't just like, I can't just be here and just say, and just call Nana and just approach him and talk to him like that. There's process and procedures that you have to follow to deal with, um, you know, deal with the chief, a paramount chief like Nana Haiti. So they organized the setup for us to literally meet uh, Nana Haiti December 29th. And it's always the same time we go there in December, uh, in the 29th is just the way the schedule flows. And so he was able to invite his, you know, his elders and his family and members of the town. And they set up a nice little tent in the back of his palace. And literally just, you know, we was able to disconnect. And so that's what I love about the project. You know, we was able to meet the chief right away. And every time we go, everyone is able to meet the chief and meet our uh, staff and crew because it's important when you're doing this kind of business that everyone is fully transparent and you know everybody who's involved and everyone has to show their face after being recording, after be interviewed and all those things, uh, no way around it. And the recordings have to be where everyone live or and, and show everybody's work and everything. So what we have offered is full transparency and even the paperwork that we have done it's to where if someone wants to reach out to the attorney or reach out to their, their consultant or some of the best people in Ghana, they can literally work that out to where they can even meet up with Nana Haiti. And then we also have an office there not too far from Nana Haiti Palace to where 
you know, Nana Haiti usually comes by and sign whatever documents to individuals, especially they did, because once I sign it and the person signed it, now Nana Haiti is the next person to sign it. So we're, we're structured to where it's fully organized, as organized as you can get. And the reason why we're doing this is we want to make an example that we can do this and we can do professional, well-organized business to the highest level where everything is legally set up and there's no issues of uh, land drama or land fraud or land litigations. I mean, these things are difficult. I've seen so many people get themselves caught into these situations. But then again, they didn't have a, a consultant, an attorney uh, that has great careers and a chief that has great career where, and myself and the survey that we're not gonna put our careers and you know, and our reputation on the line to do anything other than professional work and to make sure that we follow through. So that's what I love about working with uh, these brothers. We all agreed to be men of honor and to deliver for our brothers and sisters uh, in, in Africa and the diaspora. And this you know, bring us together. So we wanna make this also an example to let people know that if you're trying to make these moves, why not put your energy together and do group economics? That way we can look out for each other I was scrolling down and one of the things I guess people didn't see when they got this uh, email or link, what they always have to do is open it and, and click on it. Like sometimes people call me and tell me, you have a conference call coming and uh, what date it is, how do I get on? I said, family, you know, when you get the link, whether it's on your email, WhatsApp, Facebook, or the, the multitude of ways I send, all you have to do is click on it and the scroll down, scroll down little by little, and then you'll literally see all the details. So the first thing I have right here is our certificate of incorporation. Uh, very important. Uh, I'm always telling individuals, when you're trying to do these kind of deals, don't do business with people who don't have these things together. And just let them know that you know you want them to step their game up because you want you. It's so much of us that's interested to doing business in Africa and things like that. So I'm setting the tone right there. You see our registration number and you see our tax ID number. Now, in a situation like this, when your, your lawyer could look up the details and make sure that this is a real registered company and things like that. So if someone says that anything on here is fraudulent, then I challenge them to do the research on it and things like that. Because one thing about us, we cover ourselves, And that's one of the things I learned is being in the, the US Navy, because people are gonna come at you in certain ways, but if you do your work and cover yourself, you're good. And those are things that we're, we're being trained, what well, is training us to work on these fighter jets flown by the best pilots to make sure that we do our job right and don't cause fatalities and don't cause mistakes to where engines blow up and planes crash. <clears throat> and also um, this uh, certification is part of the new uh, uh, Ghana Incorporation Act on the 2019 Act 992. So that's also a document you can look up and things like that. And the reason why I say this family is because I'm all about educating us as a people and sharing what I know. And then for other people who know more than me, I'm always open to learn. That's why I've learned a lot from people a lot older than myself or people into certain business. So I've spent a lot of time talking to our attorney over the last two years and um, you know, he has educated me on a lot of things about the legality of how to move and do business. And then what I've learned from that situation, I've also shared to the highest level. All right, this part of the, uh, the newsletter, it, it talks about the conference call topics, which we'll see further down, which I'm just gonna briefly go through. But the main thing right here is the documents, videos, and pictures available. So the website, africaforafricans.org, is gonna provide you all of the initial details to be clear about. Now, as I click on the link over here, uh, when you go to the main menu of our website, all you have to do is click on Black Star, repatriation and pan-African community in Ghana. And the reason why I say repatriation uh, and pan-African community, because that was the original name, but when you do the incorporation, you have to limit the name. So right now we can still go by Black Star Pan-African community, but when you see the full name of it, it's for marketing purpose, because we're pushing the aspects of repatriation. And repatriation is that move where you're literally connecting yourself to live and do business in the land of your ancestors for straight up nation building and straight up to work with your own brothers and sisters to build something together to where we can compete with the others that are taking over the continent or the others that are dominating the continent. Um, so the list of things you're gonna have, and I'm just gonna read through it and 
What I've always recommended everyone to do who has interest in this project is to click on these links and go through them little by little. And as you can see, this is a popular uh, website with a popular information. This is two and a half years of just views because I email and send things out a lot. So you do have people looking at it and, you know, and processing it. But at the same time too, the foundation of it is not something where everyone is gonna jump on because a lot of times we wait till the communities build and then you know we want to purchase it. And a lot of times that's too late or the price done tripled and things like that. So we lay out this foundation to let individuals know it's a foundation project. And while we're building on it, uh, you know, jump in as soon as possible because while time go along, you're gonna miss out on some of the best plots. And also the price is gonna keep going up as we keep developing it, the, the land and the value of the project increase. Uh, so the first one, uh, introduction, uh, which just show you our incorporation. It shows you a few of our group pictures and things like that. As a matter of fact, since I'm doing an introduction, let me just click on this link introduction. I'll go through this and then the rest of them, I'm just gonna go through. So the next one is a uh, site map, land survey, GPS, uh, prime objective, business opportunities, building and buying homes, membership rules and code of conduct, membership application, pictures and videos, commit committees, bylaws and getting started land costs, requirements and refund policy. So those are literally the full details to cover the full amount of product to it. Once you read that, you should be able to be clear if it's something that you wanna to commit to or not. But the next set of things are gonna be the documentation that I'm gonna show you, like especially like the 100, of video, the 100 plus videos that we have on YouTube dedicated to this project, All right? But let me get back to introduction and click on this. <clears throat> All right, so once you click on introduction, a logo pops up and then you're gonna see our last uh, group uh, there in Ghana. So this is December 29th, 2021, a Ghana repatriation and investment tour group at Black South Pan-African Community in Jahadzi. Uh, this is plot uh, 21 the first completed house at uh, Black Star. So what you have is Leonard and Carmen uh, who came to Ghana with us in December, 2019 on tour. And uh, this also is the fourth time of us visiting the land uh, since uh, we initially uh, uh, made the deal in September, 2019 and did our first visit uh, December, 2019. So Leonard and Carmen was a part of the initial group and it's incredible because they literally called me uh, from Alabama and told me they wanted to go to Africa and they have never been anywhere in Africa and never have just been really connected to what we're doing. And so they, 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 they like that itinerary and they like the fact that we're talking about land and everything. And they literally went with us and enjoyed the journey. And I remember them being on the bus and just telling everyone that they're gonna go back to America and they're gonna get themselves organized. They're gonna pack up and they're gonna move to Ghana and uh, you know, they're gonna you know, look to invest in the Black Star Pan-African community. And I was like, wow, that's beautiful. But I'm not saying I didn't believe them, but you know, when you hear so many people tell you so many things, sometimes you just have to just uh, process it and everything. But they were the realest situation ever. I mean, they literally live there now, December, 2021 with their house and they have just been there and enjoying life and have no problems. And that is literally a two year time frame. Uh, you know, and things like that. So I'm telling everyone, if they're interested in making that move, we can help them from all aspects of things because everything I've helped them with from the beginning to the, you know to now, the builder that built that house is builder that I recruited, interviewed, and also had my brother Kwabena basically have that man-to-man -man talk with the builders because I'm not there on the ground and I don't want people thinking it's okay to shake my brothers and sisters down and cause problems. So, you know, Kwabena is like my enforcer if I need them to go talk to somebody and put the fear of God in them and things like that and let them know that, you know, we're not here to play games, we're doing serious business, he'll do that. And so that's why we have had no problem because he knows how to, he's a military guy and he knows how to talk to people and he knows how to get people to understand that we're together working on this. And if we cheat in each other, we're not gonna be able to build nothing. Uh, so that's a beautiful Ramart home. I've not been in this since it's completed, but I've been on the outside and I've been on the inside when it was almost, uh, when it's being worked on, and that was May 2021. So I'm letting individuals know 
We help people with passport, visa, residency, land survey, land deed. Now that's a full process of things. Now the initial journey is uh, right below it. And that's uh, myself uh, right there with uh, Nana Haiti. And then uh, another one of our you know, big groups that was right during the, you know, the COVID-19 era. And we were still able to you know, organize 20 plus people to come to Ghana with us. Uh, ever since Ghana adjusted their mandates, it has caused me to lose more people. So uh, we, you know, we went from like having 30 to 40 people to 20 something people to now like 10 to 15 people. But uh, we're still just calling out and reaching out to people and letting them know that it's okay to get out your basement and not hide because um, I've taken six of these journeys since the COVID-19 era. And all we have done is follow travel advisory and basically follow protocols and have this built up our immune system to make sure that we're in the best health and wellness. And scrolling down is just gonna talk about uh, this, our initial connection of how we organize this Pan-African community together. So it's a lot of reading and things like that. So I definitely advise everyone to take time out to read through these details. And this is it right here, family. That's how the land used to look before it looks now. So we pulled the bus to the side on the other side of the land and I kept on walking. I had my little boy there. He was doing one of those things when, you, when you're driving and you have your children in the back and they and they wondering like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And you have to tell them, cool down. We're gonna be there soon. Don't keep on asking me, are we there yet? And things like that. So it took us about a good 15 minutes to walk and literally family, I recorded a whole video of us walking and things like that. And while I'm talking to the survey and talking to, um, the attorney, we just you know, talking and showing different angles of the land. So anyone who wants to see this, you'll see that link that say, you know, where it say photos and videos or where it say documentation on the newsletter, sorry, documentation on the newsletter, or where it show photos and videos on the um, Black Star link on our website. It will just give you a link to the YouTube page and also give you a link to the Facebook page where you can see uh, the photos, uh, which I'm also gonna show um, once we are uh, process through this. All right, so legal documents uh, on our website. So this is our incorporation for Black Star Pan-African community. And then you scroll down, this is the uh, Africa for the Africans uh, Tourism Investment um, Incorporation uh, at, you know, at registered with the state of Georgia. So this has been a registered business in the state of Georgia since, um, let me make sure I got this right. I, I wanna say summer of 2017, and we started the business October of 2006 and what we had set up was this um, business uh, license and also uh, business bank account. And then we eventually got the incorporation. Uh, so just letting everyone know that the business that we're doing here in Georgia and here in Ghana is um, registered business and set up to this be as organized as possible. All right, so that is our beautiful introduction family. And let me just get back to and let's get back to the newsletter. So that's it, family. Right there on the left, left, it's uh, literally the first article, our first um, main menu item, I should say. And right, so that takes you of documentation. Uh, we have a Facebook uh, public group and also a YouTube uh, public playlist. So anyone can just click on the link and check it out. Okay. So let me do a quick little click right here. And there you go, family. Uh, it is loaded. And as you can see, I put the conference call details on there. This is a popular group I have. I'm trying to see how much people is in the group. Uh, 994 people. And it's something where I just post updates, uh, especially the videos and the photos and things like that, and show individuals that this is what we're doing. And so if you're on this, uh, on this uh, page, you'll be able to get updates. And this is the only public thing that we really have set up. Um, on our WhatsApp, it's a private group to where only um, registered and paying members are part of that group. So we can just be more focused and keep updates uh, with our private group. But uh, in this public group, uh, this, uh, this here to share, share a lot of details. And once individuals are ready to join the group, then we can uh, you know, add them. And the first thing I usually send out is the getting started email. The getting started email is gonna have all of the sample documents, all of the legal documents, and all of the process and procedures and requirements uh, 
to just become a member. So when I send that email out, I always ask everyone just to take their time and look to it. And I always say the best thing to do is to download all of the all of the files and take the time to go through it and let everyone understand that anyone that's going to send you this level of information up front right away and give you access to that is serious about their business and things like that because i want individuals to literally process the details to the full extent and be clear on it before commitment and the reason for that is because a lot of times people see things and look nice and it's it's a, and all this other stuff and it does look nice it look attractive and everything but at the same time too it's there for you to read the details and the details is going to give you the clarity and things like that. So very important that uh, we do this. And that's why I'm always trying to have conference calls and trying to encourage people to just go through this because this is a great opportunity to where if you're moving to Ghana and or getting to Ghana, you know, you don't really want to just go there spinning your wheels. Like I have people there, they, they renting for years upon years or they're there after one to two years, they come back because you know, things don't really work out and connect, but you have to make sure you have things very organized and it's, it's difficult and tricky there. So the, only, the thing I've always told everyone when people ask me, why do I live in Georgia? And I talk about Africa all the time. And I tell them, I will never move to Africa unless we have a community that we're building so I can move my business center from here to the business center there. That way I can run business operation continuous like I operate from here. I literally just operate seven days a week efficiently here you know, consistent power, consistent everything, especially high-speed internet. So in order for me to operate successfully there in Ghana, I literally have to have those things. So a business center and a community center is a part of the community. Beyond that, every other uh, lot is specifically and strictly and only for residential reason only. So everyone is to build their home on it, whether it's, um, and it just has to be nice and neat. It's no specifications on what type of homes to build and things like that. Because once we start saying, these are the five floor plans, then you lose more people. And you, you start telling people you can't do this, you lose more people. And I learned that from Garvey Town. Garvey Town told people that they couldn't build two floor house, which doesn't make sense. And told people they couldn't have a garage, which doesn't make sense. And told people that they literally can't park their car by their house, literally. And so I'm like, where am I gonna park? Is there like a big parking lot in the community? And they literally told us all of these things after we gave them their money. Uh, which you know is one of those unfortunate situations and that's why they're out of business and we're progressing and things like that because you have to be honest and real with people up front and you know they claim that they couldn't get people and it's strange how you know even though we have members that have left we still have 55 plus people and again it's, it's very hard to even get one or two people much less 50 some people and so uh, what I've explained to them it's all about organizing and presentation and you know and presentation is literally everything, 100% of your business and marketing is presentation. Without you, without people being able to see the information or the presentation, it's hard for them to you know, commit to anything. And that's why I always have it set up to where individuals or small groups, if they wanna do a private uh, Skype, Zoom, or WhatsApp uh, video call, I'm available because the most important thing is for us to go through all of these details and explain everything so people can see the long-term vision. But what we're literally looking for is a lifetime commitment because our children need us to have a lifetime commitment to build factories and build resorts and build all different kinds of industries, import, export, and for us to connect with other parts of the Black world to do business so they can have these beautiful careers and not have to depend on begging other people for jobs, you know, because... Like we have a situation now in America where once Mexico offload their population in America, they're coming for all the opportunities that black people still even holding on to. And as more of their people climb up in higher space, all they're doing is putting more of their people in place and things like that. And I've literally seen it, uh, especially being here uh, in this county uh, for the last 20 years here in Georgia. I've literally seen it go from being, you know, I've seen black men out there working on the roads and working on rooftop, working on doing landscaping and doing so many other uh, work to where now you see this other people, uh, mainly Mexicans, and I'm not here to come after any other race or nations of people. I'm just explain the story of our situation of why we need to focus on investing with ourselves so we can have something. And everything I'm doing in my lifetime right now, as, as, as I'm 44 and I've lived, you know, you know I had a beautiful life because I started early um, in life working and joining the military and everything. So still young uh, but want to focus more of my life on working with other people so our children can have 
something, have these opportunities. And that's why uh, the phase two land I'm gonna show, it's gonna show you know, different buildings. And those are, those are the buildings, including the business center that we even have on the first phase. It's there for us to share all of our great skills and talents and educate our own children to the highest level between the age of 13 to 19, teach them everything that they need to know about being a technical or business person, which is my, you know, which is my complete background, uh, business administration and technical administration. So once you're on the Facebook page, let me see, you're gonna look to the top and you're gonna click on media. Once you click on media, you're gonna go directly to album. And you're gonna see five album, uh, the Ford tour uh, group album. And then you're gonna see one where uh, we call it land clearing photos. And that was uh, literally in August, September of uh, 2020. And as soon as we paid the chief the money, which was August in 2020, uh, he literally gave us full access and gave us a full lease and everything. And we all, our board members signed it and his board members signed it. And, the courts of Ghana stamped it using the attorney and things like that. So that's also part of getting started email. So that's one of the documents I always tell people to make sure that you read to it and clear it and see all those stamps. And if they need to go to the, the, the courts of Ghana and everything to verify those documents, uh, then they need to just go there and do that before they commit. But I'm basically letting everybody know that we're putting everything out there for you to be clear on. So once you commit, we automatically assume that you did your homework, your legwork, and now we're looking to this, have that lifetime commitment where we work together to get this done because that's what it's going to take to get this done because if you, you there's no way we can even compete with the, the likes of the people who are dominating Ghana right now, which are the Indians, the Chinese, and the Lebanese. You're going to see uh, the Lebanese mall going up, which is the Palace Mall, and you're going to see the Chinese malls going up everywhere and things like that. Uh, and so they're literally working different aspects and then a lot of fancy restaurants and hotels and things like that. A lot of those things that they own is things that I feel like us in the diaspora could have put our money together and own and compete with. But, you know, there's no need to complain about those things because, you know, we just, you know, we, we didn't do it. So now we have time to focus on getting it done. So so once you just click on these albums, you just see this a flow of this us on the land. And as you look and look, you just see more and more development on the land to where the next time you're going to see more and more things going on. But this is just to let people know that this is a real place, you know? And the last set of photos got even realer when, when we literally leased a, a office or a, a business house, I should say, right there across from our community to run business operation. And to also make it to where when we have business people coming, they can have someone there consistently to meet and things that before the business house was established, it was so difficult trying to coordinate to get people to meet uh, individuals there and things like that. So that was one of the greatest accomplishments that we have. And then now our next thing is to put the business setups in that office, just like I have back here where you have your workstations and you have all your you know, office furnitures and it could be a nice comfortable place you know, to do business and to have small conferences and things like that. Uh, and if anyone that's literally looking to go see the land, what they can do, is you, know, you book reservations with us. And if you need to stay overnight, we have a guest room there at the house. And that's because sometimes you get there and then it start getting dark. And the best thing to do is this overnight there and just take your time and go back to Accra or wherever the next day. And this, these are the things that we're putting in place to make it uh, smoother. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is just click on the YouTube page. All right, so um, a YouTube page, um, once you get to the YouTube page, you're gonna scroll down and then you're gonna see Black Star, Pan-African Community Development and Progress. And perfect, and when you look over to the left, it's gonna say 101 videos. And that's real. That's how many videos there's been. Uh, and most of those are videos which us showing the land, uh, conference calls, uh, us uh, literally showing you and doing interviews with the chief, us doing presentations, us uh, interviewing builders, uh, going to meet the, the solar companies, doing presentations with them. I have, a, I have people who do catch water system so you can ha have your full sustainable water system to where you can have unlimited flow of water. So, you know, we're 
showing you that uh, we're using modern day technology to build this community. And also show you lots of um, the areas around the town that way you can get familiar with how the, the town look and Winnebago look. So, and then you, you have seen so many angles and different views of the land from us coming in from the main road and things like that. So for those who can't see the land right away, these are the things that we have organized so you can process it until you get a chance to see the land uh, because it's a situation where you don't have to see the land physically to even make any commitment. Uh, the coordinates are there, GPS links and things like that. And it puts you in the, the clear location of where it is. And I'm just scrolling down to see. And also we have some, some of our repatriation investment conference and citizenship conference uh, videos on there. And then the last other thing is uh, the highlights from the beach. The highlights of the beach is a two, the beach is about two miles away. So it gives you a situation where you know you're in a you're right there by the Atlantic Ocean. And if you want to go swimming and you want to just enjoy beach life, you know, you can just make your way down there. Eventually on the on phase three, the goal is, and I'm still working with the surveyor and the chief, for them to let us know what beach access land that they have so they can put it in writing and, and laid out. That way we can reach out to investors that we have that, that literally are open to doing resorts and open to doing different things. So as we get all these things more organized, uh, our goal is to literally just present it more and more to those who are interested. Uh, that way we can just you know, build this future. So all of these are energies that we've shown you that we're literally building this community from the ground up and showing you step-by-step step on a regular basis, highlights and updates And so if I'm at a, don't expect everyone to look to all of these uh, videos, but at the same time too, I mean, we just wanna show people the, the flow of our documentation. And the main thing is this, if you even start from the very bottom and work out, work your way up, because we have the newest videos on the top to show the progress at the top. You know, but when you go all the way down, it's just amazing. Even the, the, the first look at the beach, this, this was our view of the beach before uh, the, no, the, before the COVID era, uh, the beach is a little dirtier now because people are not doing their traditional beach cleaning and things like that. Uh, but we're going to get back to that because the reason why I was attracted to this community is because when I went there, it was so clean. And then I went back again. I was like, okay, this is real. It's not like they cleaned up just to, to trick us and you know, to where make us think it's a clean community. So part of what we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be taking volunteers and I'm one of those volunteers. I'll be there you know, cleaning up the beach and you know, walking around and we're gonna be picking up trash and creating recycle programs and things like that. And this, you know, our brother Azebo is already there uh, creating a youth energy, which is good. Uh, we don't have the full fledge of resources to support that energy right now, but at the same time too, it's good that he got it started. All right, so family, let me click back on the newsletter and I'll scroll down. So this is our 15 acre masterpiece uh, layout, right? So Leonard and Carmen is right there by 21. Yeah? And I'll be their neighbors across on 22, even though my focus you know, is to build my business center, which is our business center. And it's also um, a place where we're just gonna have this high level of this business operation. So. That's the next thing I got to work on is the design for the business center and also the design for the community center. But I am literally always open for anyone who wants to contribute their energy and skills to help with any of those things. I can always give you what I have uh, for us to do it. And right now we only have about uh, four of these uh, lots uh, remaining. So if anyone is interested, um, this, they can just let me know and we can even put them on standby list and things like that in case someone changed their mind and things like that. Uh, so. It's all about uh, communication, but the main thing everyone has to do is fill out those paperwork from the getting started email and submit it back. Uh, that way, you know, we have clear details of your commitment. As you can see, the, the layout looks just like the uh, survey. Uh, so this is a 15 acre survey. And that's how, that's how the site layout was designed. You have to actually use the, the, the physical scope of it. And then when you do all your freelance drawing, then you send it to the survey, the surveyor, and you literally just digitalize it. So what you're looking at is you see all these stamps and documents, um, approved, approved. So the Lands Commission, if you take this document to them, 
they'll verify if they did these stampings or if it's fraudulent or if someone did certain things. And the reason I'm saying this is because this is to educate us as a people, because I've seen too many people make commitments on land and no one gives them any documentation or anything. The guy does say that, and I love you. And then she said, okay, I'm gonna give you my money or, or vice versa and things like that. And other crazy stuff or people just, you know, trust is fine, um, and, you know, because you want to trust the people that you're doing things with, but also do your due diligence and do your research. So what we do is give you all of the documents and all the information for you to do your research. Other than that, you can just look at the, the legal setup and just understand this is real and let's go. And so you see Leonard and Carmen has been living there in peace and harmony and the buildings have been going up and things like that. When you have issues with land and things like that, you literally are not gonna be in peace and things like that. Land guards and other people will come out at you. So that's why you have the attorneys and all these situations set up. And that's why you build these relationships. Very important, because while I'm telling people about joining our community, I'm also putting out information for other people who may want to get their own land and build their own community, or they may want to just go with someone else, but they wanna make sure that, you know, but you also wanna make sure those documentation is good. So. I'm just sharing general information to educate us. And I want to see more of us do that about how we can do things in Africa, because I feel like so many of us come there and don't have a clue. And I'm always telling people I've been around for 16 straight years in this game, as far as this connecting to Ghana. And I have a lot of connections in the country. And even though I'm not in Ghana, majority of the time, sometimes it's there in Ghana for anywhere from 25 to 30 days out of the year and maybe, you know, and that's basically it. So I depend on all my business people that I have in place there to handle everything. All right, these topics I'm just gonna breeze through. We talk about the four plots uh, remaining and things like that. So all, indivi all individuals or anyone have to do this, just email me and let me know and we can talk. I'm available to talk to anyone about any of these things, our Africa tours or investment uh, throughout, the, throughout the week or throughout the day. Uh, that's how serious I am. I make myself available and things like that. Only thing I tell people is to make sure they read through some of the information and things like that, and then jot down questions, and then we go through it. And all of these plots that we all have set is rated for 80 feet by 100 feet, um, which is a total of 8,000 square feet. And so phase one is set for um, 15 acres and 50 plots. Phase two is set for uh, 60 acres and 240 plots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show. All right, so this is uh, this is my drawing. Uh, it's um, it's you know it's it's rough draft with um, handwriting that I hope and everyone can read. So the beginning of it is um, half of the the property, which is uh, 30 acres, and we've been able to craft 120 residential plots. Now, once a digitalized version finished, it won't look like this, but this is kind of the best flow of how I can get it to the survey and also to show you up front. Now, the, the second part of it is um, uh, 30 acres. So that's uh, gonna be 120 plots. So the breakdown of this, um, the part that say park, that's gonna be a little bigger. It's gonna be closer to 15 uh, plots, or I should say 16 plots, uh, four acres. So we're gonna set that to where we can make it you know, a real park with uh, you know, a soccer field, basketball courts and things like that. I just have to really see how it's gonna work on the layout. Uh, but the goal of that is to just have something for you know, the community, us as a people, or I should say the town. Uh, over here, you're gonna see 18 plots for apartments and then at the bottom, six plots for apartments. So that's uh, 24 plots. So what we're looking at is just uh, individ individuals or groups or whoever or us itself who wants to just invest in apartments because not everybody is going to want to build a house. So those apartments could be as high as three floors and things like that. And, you know, we set up to where, you know, we, we work it out to where something gets back to the community and then the investors, you know, get their money. So those are things that, you know, we can talk in details once more and more people just reach out to us. And then right by the, the apartments with six plots, you can see farm for 32 plots. Now that's um, about eight uh, acres and plus the point, I wanna say it's a point 70, there's a little bit of extra land left. So it'd be a little bit more than that uh, once the survey worked out. 
But the goal is for us to literally plant all of the vegetables and all the fruits and everything that we need. And if we need to have poultry farming and things like that, you have enough land to do that. But beyond that, what I'm saying to everyone is we want to do it like how we do it in Jamaica, where you're going to plant fruit trees all around your property. And this is something that I can't get out of my mind because I was born into this world in, in Jamaica to where, you know, you know, you wake up in the morning, you have mango trees, you have guava trees, you have, you know, coconut tree, apple tree, orange tree, and you have all these different tropical trees and things like that. And I realized that, you know, when I'm in Ghana, a lot of times developers just cut everything down, which may be a situation that you have to do, but at the same time too, when you build a community, you wanna plant these things. So I'm telling everyone, you know, plant, uh, you know, plant these things around your house. And after a while, you're gonna have, you're gonna have a nice fresh environment. And when it's time for harvest, we all pick the fruits and we all go to the community center and then we all just share it or work it out somehow. Uh, but the goal is just to create situations to where we're not dependent on too much of markets. We are, you know, we're getting our food from the fruits and veggies that we're planting. And also, you know, we're two miles away from the, the, you know, the beach. So, you know, we can have access to doing fishing. Uh, so those are some of the ways we're gonna cut down the cost of our expensive and things like that. So eventually you have a situation where you, you have, you're cutting the cost of drastically of your food. And then you're basically having no water bill, no light bill and no, you know, no mortgage or any rent unless you rent it from one of the apartments, which would be a situation where those who set up will work it out to where someone can actually buy an apartment or condo and things like that. So the flexibility is uh, there set up for us to do those things. Now the 28 commercial plots is just for individuals who just want to start a business or start something and they need maybe a warehouse and they maybe need something um, uh, set up. Maybe they need a psychological clinic or something. Just, just throwing things out there. Uh, so it will be broken down in the 80 by 100 lots and individuals can also put their money together and go on a lot and then build it. So these are the future vision that we laying out now so we can all think and process. Uh, so some of these buildings are uh, the community store where we just have all the things that we need. Uh, it's, it's on one acre, so it can be a nice two floor uh, building and have everything that you need in it. That way we have quick access. And on phase one, we just have to use the community center, which the community center and the business center, but more so the community center to run some of these operations. Right? Then right by it, we're gonna have a community and business center um, on you know, four plots each it should be more than enough to build something nice on this phase, a medical uh, center, education, and then maintenance. Uh, maintenance is always gonna be the, one of the most uh, important things. Uh, you know, we, we build machines, we build nations, we build things, but what we always gotta do is maintain it. Uh, just like, you know, we have to maintain the land, cutting the grass and making sure the, you know, the, the land look nice and neat. So our best bet is to literally work towards this to where we have a nice organized community where things are structured. And I have some marketing brochure right here uh, that I put together. I'm always uh, creating brochures and flyers and things that you know, remind me back in the day, early days when we started marketing our Africa tours. So right there in the middle, that's me and uh, brother Zebo. Um, I operate as the president and Azibo operate as a vice president. So I manage uh, business operation here in uh, Georgia and he just managed it there in, in uh, Ghana, in Jahadji, right across the street. So there's a video that we have on the uh, playlist. Uh, when you click on it, you see the full inside. And we just, we were real about, we showed, I even told Azibo, I was like, brother, you should have, you know, brother, um, I know, I know we didn't, we don't have much setup and everything, but we just want to show people what the place looked like and everything. Uh, so that's us being transparent. And next time when we do a video, you'll see it look more like a business office. All right, and some of these are some of the same photos that you have seen on the uh, website. I used the best photos we could. And I also just show the two surveys and then the uh, 15 acre site map and then some dialogue here and show two homes going up at the bottom and the, the completed home at the top and then show one of the building crew, the guys dressing all black. All right, so let me get back to the newsletter again and scroll down and then so I can just open things up for questions soon. All right, so those are the two phases that we talk about now. Phase three vision, vision of a beach town and industrial park. 
The third phase is commercial and residential. This includes industrial development, land and beach property to build a beach town. The industrial part will have lots of land for us to get companies who want to build small or big industrial development project. Likewise, you know, when we put our money together, we could, we're, we're part of those investments also, but we need to expand it to where we can have other people you know, who can come in and you know, get these things done. Uh, this Beach Sound Vision will have uh, resorts, shops, bars, restaurant, entertainment, uh, water sports, physical sports, full environment of culture, and many other wonderful things. These are plans that we're working towards and putting things in place to make them attainable. Black Star Pan-African community will run as a conglomerate so we can become a community of business investors and managers. This structure allows us to build generational wealth for our families and give us more flexibility on investing in our own Black power and empire. Our goal is to build a business empire like all the rich white corporate family brand we know today, like, you know, the Marriott and others. You know, somehow the Marriott is always in my mind, just like, you think about Ford and things like that, you know, the, the corporations. All right, so family, and um, the next set of things is just uh, talking about uh, the community and prices, talking about the lease, the survey, uh, land clearing, and then um, our private um, Facebook and WhatsApp group, which is just only for members only, but uh, I've showed you the public link uh, that you can join. All right, and here goes a um, raw copy of the 60 uh, acre survey. And we have a lands commission search for it. And then I have a few videos, which the main thing you have to do is just click on the YouTube link to see the videos. This is just something I posted for presentation purpose. And now the, the 10 committees, uh, which I'm always still trying to organize to where we can just get things going. So right now uh, the committees will be you know, effective is more so setting things up for once we get there on the land, we can operate in committees and get the work done. So I'm going to read the 10 committees that we have. And all these 10 committees I have WhatsApp group for. So if anyone is ever interested, I can easily find a WhatsApp group and just, uh, send it to them because I put my name on all of them. That way, you know, I can always share it with anyone that uh, wants to join. Business and professional affairs, uh, one. Two, safety, security, and surveillance. Three, education, cultural and social affairs. Four, sustainable energy and utilities. Five, medical and wellness center. Six, planning and development. Seven, maintenance and landscaping. Eight, waste management and recycling. Nine, agriculture and livestock. 10, bylaws and homeowners affair. Right. And so with the bylaws, you'll see that document on the website, and also you'll see it in that uh, email, and it's a long document, so I just tell people just to go through it. It's just shown that we are homeowners association, and uh, it's set for a membership dues of $15 per month or $300 per year. And that money goes towards land clearing and doing certain basic things on the land, including paying for security, and also just anything that needs to be done on the land. And also it goes towards us doing certain things uh, with our community uh, business office. So right there, family, that is Leonard and Carmen. And that is December, 2020. So they came back. <laughs> I want to say as of like, as soon as the, 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 you know, as soon as Ghana was open, I want to say in September, 2020, they came and um, they went to work and, that's them right there with the surveyor. And that's when the house was not built or nothing was up. They was just, the lot was right there. And like a year later, the house is built. And it's just that simple based on those who are ready. And you have some more documents talking about the initial connection and uh, ex especially with our brother, Raymond Gomez, a good brother that um, also connected with uh, he's, you know, he's one of the um, family secretary and his whole goal was to make sure that you know, all of us are working together to pull this project off so we can get more connections from the, the DAS for connecting to Africa. And some of our uh, past um, 
investment conference. That's the last one I did, uh, December 27, uh, 2021. So we always do introductions and talk about our vision of Black Star Pan-African community and also other presenters talk about how we can live and do business in Ghana, in Africa, more organized. And I'm still looking at this uh, December 2019 uh, picture. It's unbelievable. It's just, I'm just looking at this raw land and then now you know, see how it's going up. It's amazing, but this is one of the ways that we can learn as a people, because as I'm mentioning, the rich developers in this county, they just buy up the land and they just build everything and they just charge you several times of you know what they invested in, which you know it's their right to do that because they, they paid for everything up front. Uh, us, the goal is just to us put our money together and then individuals just build their homes and things like that. So a different concept, but it's more in a corporate economic concept, which is what you have to use if you're trying to make these kind of moves because this, this, these kind of project or this project is a very expensive project. So you're gonna have to use the different methods you can use to make it work. So I studied um, Amos Wilson book, Blueprint for Black Power. And a lot of ideas I come up with, I get that from that book and, you know, and many other books that I have on the bookshelf behind me. And then a bunch of DVDs there that I used to study back in the early days of 2003 to 2006, which where I was a slavey, get off from work and come right to the house and just watch DVDs all night. And just, you know, because when you feel like you, you, you know, you, didn't, you don't know about your roots and culture and you know about these things and someone exposed you that, you know, that you've been basically being a slave all your life and don't know anything about your own people and things like that. You take it personal and you're like, OK, you, especially when they're talking to you, you're supposed to be an educated person like myself. I'm like, OK, well, I'm, edu I'm educated based on all these other things, but I'm not educated about my roots and culture. Let me do something about that and let me try to just see if I can make an be influence other people to get into the world of this healthier living and also this black consciousness. All right, this is one of my good brothers. You know, we have the, the Africa for the African shirt on. As you can see, these are shirts where we have multitudes of colors and we got the black version behind me. And this is not our land, actually. This is one of the land that was on previously uh, called Garvey Town and things like that. And I just like that photo of how we post. You know, this is you know, me and my Jamaican brother. Uh, you know, we always talk about how far we come from this in Kingston and just being able to just live in America and build our business. And then now uh, we're in Africa talking about we're going to connect Africa and, you know, where we come from, the Caribbean together. And we're going to do import, export. We're going to be doing business together and things like that. So it's just a beautiful vision. Let's go now. Now, the next sort of thing I have, um, I have a link on our website um, and it's just mainly for people who need straight up consultation and want to sit down and write a game plan and things like that. And I'm always down to helping anyone. And especially for those of us in the community, you can just reach out to me directly. And it's not something that, you know, we're looking to just charge people, but if we just need to work certain things out, you know, we do have prices on there, but I'm always doing my best to just make sure we help our members, especially for other people that are just not our members and looking to do certain things. Those are where cost prices come in because I can only do so much for individuals that are not part of our group because my main focus has to be a part of building this group together to where we can get this thing done. And this is uh, us doing another group photo with my good brother, Kamal. And Kamal was one of the brothers that went to meet me on the October 2011 Ghana journey. And we've kept in touch all this time. And he's even came to Tanzania with me uh, on November 2020 and things like that. So I always appreciate the, um, you know, good people like that, that, you know, they see the vision and they wanted us, you know, commit and they wanted us, you know, be a part of it. So, you know, that's what we do. We help our members get these things done. That way they can have less stress and things like that. And this is my legendary 2006 to 2021 um, tour groups uh, to many countries. I think all the countries are in there. I think the only country that I don't have a tour for was uh, Egypt and uh, Kenya. Other than that, it's uh, eight countries in there. Senegal, the Gambia, Ghana, Togo, Benin, South Africa, Tanzania, and uh, Ethiopia. And then that's where I provide all these links at the bottom. All right, so family, let me uh, stop this uh, screen sharing. 
And let me stop this uh, pin. All right, uh, family, um, that was, um, hopefully that wasn't too long. I just wanted to get some um, recorded documentation of our, our presentation and our screen sharing and things like that. So what I wanna do is just open up for questions so we can dialogue. And if anyone wants to turn a video on, it's fine, but it's not a situation where anyone has to turn a video on. It's just, um, just using Zoom now and just looking to be more interactive. Uh, if anyone wants to dialogue about anything that we talk about, uh, just unmute yourself. And while you're doing that, I'm just looking to see if I had anything else that I need to talk or share with anyone. Brother Bumani, Brother Bumani. Hey, greetings, greetings. Yeah, this is uh, John Kofi. Uh, I'm live, I live in Connecticut, in the United States. All right, perfect. Yeah, I'm semi-retired. And I've uh, been following you for a while. I wanna really congratulate you on the work that you have been doing. Um, can't say enough about that. Appreciate uh, it. Thanks. Thank sir. You. It a lot. I've been following you for a couple of years since wow. the Harvey Town. Um, the question that I have is what location in Ghana? Is it the upper, lower, central region? Uh, yes, uh, it is the central region. So once you're in Accra, it's about an hour and a half away to two hours uh, from Accra. What's the name of the uh, region? It's uh, the central region and the town is called Jahadzi and it's, uh, it's a suburb of Winneba or, or basically outside of Winneba. That's like, um, I'm here in Jonesboro, which is basically this you know, district outside of uh, Atlanta, if you just want to look at it like that. And it's yeah. also an hour and a half to two hours away from Cape Coast, Elmina. So what it does is put you in the, put you in the middle. Of, it, it connects you from the two most popular cities there in Ghana, which is Accra and Cape Coast. Wow. Right in the middle, and also puts you two miles away from the beach, which is strategic, you know, because when we build our yachts and things like that, you know, we want to have quick access to the beach to, to enjoy the sailing around the Atlantic Ocean and up yes, the West Africa and down the coast. The other question I have is uh, the building plans and the costs to build. Uh, so you have to get have a surveyor first to have to acquire the building plans and the costs. How does that work? Uh, yes, uh, once. Uh, once you pay for your land and then you pay for your survey, we get you a survey. And then once your survey comes back, uh, then uh, we uh, use the survey information. The attorney will write you a deed of assignment. And then I'll sign it, the chief sign it, and then um, you sign it. And then that becomes your legal document, which is survey that you give to your builder. And um, you can just, they'll, they'll work with you with the building plan and then the building permit, and you can start building. Okay, do we have any information on the uh, the, the builders, uh, their cost up front? Well, uh, I have a list of builders. Uh, I can just give you a general cost, but uh, when individuals are ready, I usually just send them the uh, builder list. As a matter of fact, um, what I usually do is put it in a WhatsApp message that I sent, and also I'm trying to see if it's on the email, but I usually just send those things out. It's on a PDF, and it's a list of few builders. Right now we have two builders. We have a, we have a Ram Earth builder, and we have a tradition, not traditional, we have a, you know, what people do as modern day building, which is you know, cement and, um, and center blocks. So, but what you're looking at for a four bedroom, three bathroom house, uh, one floor, you're looking at anything from between 40 to 60,000 based on the specifications and things like that. So that's the range of what uh, the current people are paying uh, to get their house built. And the reason for that is because of hard negotiation with the builders to get them to understand that there's a lot of business coming, give the right price, build something real nice. Because what people are going to do is like, they're going to look at that house and say, who built it? And then that's how the builders are going to be getting referrals yeah, and things like that. Uh, so I'll make sure um, that I talk with you and I get you all of the, that information so you can uh, process it. And then with the builders, while we're on WhatsApp, I usually just send their contacts and then we just communicate and then tell individuals that if they have any issues with any builders or any confusion and just you know, send me a message and I'll communicate with them. These are my builders that I specifically recruit. That way, you know, we can have some kind of situation to where if there's any, any issues, we can deal with them and things like that. And that's what I mentioned about our consultant being the, the enforcer that talks to everyone because sometimes, you know, this, this the reality of the situation is sometimes some of our builders is there in Ghana, they just think, 
we're made of riches and gold or we're walking dollar bills and you know and we don't want nobody um by using cheap materials and we don't want nobody doing shortcuts and everything uh, and things like that so those things have been set to where once you sign a contract with them the only thing i tell individuals don't give them all the money uh, just pay, pay them for the foundation pay them for the walls up pay them for the roof and pay them in stages that's the best thing to do and then every stage that is paid for right. you know, we make sure it's evaluated right okay that sounds good so i have to become a member how do i become a member yeah this is a this is a it's a private community and it's a private membership so um if i don't have you on the email list and you have my number you can just text me and send me a message and I'll, I'll get you the emails and you're not gonna even uh, talk about it. That's what I've been doing like, uh, ever since I got back from Ghana, I've been just doing more interactive communication, just, just calling people and going through information. That way they're hearing it from the, you know, they're hearing it from the source. Yeah, thank you, brother. I will and uh, keep moving forward. Uh, perfect, yeah. So, so you have my number to text, right? And then you, you, see, it on, you see it on all the documentations. I say, I say. Right, perfect. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. And appreciate you just following and just keeping up with what we're doing. And I'm happy to see a lot of people have been doing that. Uh, and you know, because you know, you want, you know, you want you want people to see your growth and your progress, you know. And it's and see that you're serious because it's it's too many people getting into this game and they're not serious and things like that. And I want to be able to stand out from the people that are, you know, not serious. Hello, Bomani. Greetings, uh, Dr. Austin. Greetings. Okay, for the survey, do I send that to you? Uh, yes, yeah. okay. send the survey okay. to me. And the only thing about the survey, it may take a few months. Usually it takes about three months. Right now I'm working with a survey to finish up. I'm trying to get them to get the Lands Commission to give us the last few surveys that we did uh, towards the end of the year. Okay. And then um, we're going to be working on all the other people that need surveys done. So as soon as you're ready to get your survey done, just, you know, just let me know that's uh, no big deal and we'll get, get it going. Right now, I've just given them, I wanna say I've given them about eight plots for people who need surveys done. So I'm looking forward to him getting that survey uh, done for us. Um, when is this? I'm hoping that he get our stuff done by at least June. And things like that. So in the summer, all the surveys that are coming in will be done in the summertime and maybe quicker. It just depends on the Lands Commission. The reasons for that is the central region is one of the big busiest region right now as far as development because it's the place where the best land is. You know, it's beach oh. access and it's away from Accra and it's away from Cape Coast. So that's what makes it so valuable. And the Lands Commission just have to get it together because they're overwhelmed and you know, and and it's a situation where the only way you get these things done is you have people that works for you. Like the survey used to work for the Lands Commission, which is perfect because, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, he always talk about his boss, his ex-boss, and he has a good relationship with him. So uh, okay. usually they work out those things. So that's perfect. And then um, let us know what kind of builder you want. And if you don't have a builder list, I can send you one. And I can also introduce you to the two builders that we have there. Yeah, and I have, you, you sent the list. Because um, I contact one of the ones, the I guess the lady for the uh, Ram Earth. Oh yes, and, uh, yes, and she charged you forty dollars just to talk to her. Yeah, um, you can also call Wellbeck. Wellbeck is not going to charge you that, but you probably charge you something okay. on the end. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the thing of it is, it's ideal that people just make themselves available to have conversation, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do because. It's hard to know what you want to pay for if you don't talk to somebody. That's true. And time is money. And I understand that. I miss and, our... um, for, for a ramped earth, for a small one, because I just want a small one, because I want that outdoor, indoor living. Oh, like two bedrooms, two bathrooms? Yeah, maybe one bedroom or maybe two. Right. Yeah, I, I don't want my family to come and live with me. I want them to get their own you know, and wow. live close. Oh, cool, cool, perfect. When we build apartments, they can also stay in one of those apartments. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And things, and then some people, some people are not going to be living there all the time. So we let them know that we'll have property management in the business center, and then they can turn their keys over, and then we work out whatever contract to manage their property and make sure they get their money, and then some of it goes back to the community. So just, so these are just concepts that we just working out and things like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Because I was told that it's about six thousand. 
for maybe a one or two bedroom. Oh, that's what. Um, oh, that, oh, all right, that's what the uh, Quana. All right, that's her analysis on that. All right, um, and and she's just one of our. She's the only builder that we have from America, which I appreciate because I'm trying to get more of our people also uh, mm -hmm. from the diaspora to be a part of this project, not just us. This you know, and but some people are not in a such situation where they can move yet. But uh, we're gonna even have we have even skills people in the group where. We're going to be building each other houses or doing different parts of each other homes based on our skills and background. Mm -hmm. But I can't start building until I get the survey, correct? Oh yes, exactly. As soon as you get the survey, you okay. can start building as per um, the chief Nana Haiti, and uh, he's the one that usually deals with the building uh, permit and the building, the building committee people, because what he said is they slows people progress down because he said they're super slow and mm -hmm. things like that. And that's true. That's true. And one more thing. Can you switch me from December to May, please? Because oh, yes. I would like to go in May. All right, cool. So I do need to I'll switch you over. On, you're talking about in the group chat, right? Because I'll switch you over on the email. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. I'll uh, make a note to do that. Okay, thank you very much. Absolutely. And then, um, and I want to, I'm trying to remember if you sent me your, uh, all of your fill out paper for your, for your residency. And, I did. I did. As a matter of fact, you have it, and because um, I said I was going to go the beginning of May. All right, cool. So I'm perfect. Still yeah. trying to work that out, yes, and trying to figure out where I'm going to stay and all that all right, until perfect. you come and link up, you know, with your group. All right. So the main thing we're going to do is uh, once you get there, um, we're going to get you to. You have to turn your passport in, and they'll, they'll start processing it. But you have to be there for. At least a good 15 days. Uh, it's a little tricky, but we're gonna work it out. And um, I'm gonna be working that out to where they're gonna do a few, a few of us at the same time to where it get done. Okay, okay. And so, do you recommend that I leave? Maybe um, the I know our trip is what about 13 days, 12 days. Uh, it's a it's a 12 day itinerary, and we didn't gone up for 10 days, so we finished on the fourth. So. You know, I don't want to tell anyone this to stay a bunch of time because it's you know it's a cost staying there and everything. But mm -hmm. uh, five to ten days is always good. But I'm trying okay, to get okay. expedited to where you know once you, the paperwork is already in place and then they literally just start processing it. But it's the way we're doing it is to just to get it done, get it started ahead of time. Okay. Yeah, because you already had the paperwork. I think last month. All right. Perfect. So yeah. the goal mm -hmm. is to let me just make a note here. And because I said that I was going to go, go the beginning of May. Okay, perfect. But, uh, oh, you wanted to get there earlier? Which mm -hmm. is, yeah, get there earlier, a little bit earlier. And maybe stay in Accra for maybe a, maybe a week until you all come, possibly. And uh, as time go along, you know, we, um, especially, I'm looking at the time frame, especially one month before we leave, uh, which Time is going by, which will be our next month. Um, the first, um, which will be the, the second or third week of uh, next month, is when we're literally going to do a big push to make sure all these things is in place. Because I'm waiting for other okay. people. So they like to do the residency and things like that, it, mm -hmm. like five people at a time. Okay, excellent. Okay, thank you. Uh, absolutely, I appreciate your love and support and energy, and um, we're gonna we're gonna make this work. And and you look very excited. And uh, thank you for this. I am connecting with us and things like that it's um i know it's a, i know it's um i know it's a whole lot to this whole stuff and it's like different from what we have or used to but um I'm, I'm yeah, but it's worth it it's worth it i'm trying to avoid a um ukraine situation where we have to run i'm trying to have my stuff in place yeah and that's what i tell people that uh, in order for me to move from here i need to have these things in place so we can send it over uh so it's, it's, it's a bold move to get those things going on but yeah yeah, it's um, it's yes, yeah, it's, it's terrible watching the news at times. Uh, it um, it, it makes you think about the future of the country that you live in here, and uh, all we have been to as a people because it's been very peaceful as the last like I don't know the last 10, 20 years. I think it's mm -hmm. been peaceful. I don't remember much happening in the last twenty years, especially since I've been here in Georgia. It's been relatively beautiful, right. and uh, but you know, just like people say that well, they were chilling and a month ago everything was all good, and now it's different. Right. So I guess we you know, should never take these things for granted. Um, and that's why I'm pushing for people to like, let's 
try to work together with our own people in Africa and build something so we can just have that ultimate, this black empire on the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. Lamani. Lamani. Hey, greetings. Say what's up to Dr. Austin, our brother, our child. Hey, Dr. Austin, how you doing, Hello. brother? Hey, how are you? <laughs> how you doing there? I salute you. I'm well. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Hey, Dr. Austin, I'm happy to hear you going in, in May because the sooner you get out, the better. You go out there and get your feet on the ground and make your preparations. Before you I know agree. it, your billing will be up. No I agree. Back. The yeah, don't the wait bell. till December. Don't wait till December. December might be too late. <laughs> oh. <You say laughs> That's that, what I'm afraid of. By December, we'll have another issue going on. You're saying yeah. that because you're going to be there in May, right? So perfect yeah. you guys will be able to meet each other. And you'll be able to meet uh, some of the other people that's our uh, members also that are there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm looking yeah, forward nice to, to it. Out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think something else big is coming soon. So, you know, I, I, I would advise people if they want to go to Africa, just go. I mean, you know, you can't plan everything out in your life some of the time. You just have to sometimes do things on the fly. You can't always plan everything out. Some people can, but, you know, sometimes when you plan things, it, things don't always go to according to plan. So sometimes you have to improvise and just figure things out as you go. Because sometimes you could be planning things out and, you know, before you know your time's up. So that's true. You know. The one thing I learned about um, from being in the army is mm -hmm. that you always plan before you know you 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 plan. You you always plan. You you try to have things in place just yeah. in case. Yes. And so you know, but yeah. yes. But the good thing with the land that the money's purchased and we can build on is that there's a housing project across the street that you can yes, live see. there affordable mm -hmm. that's thousand yes. dollars for the year while you're building and, it, and, and, you know, and i considered that i considered that but i'm trying to decide whether or not i want to teach another year because i'm also a high school teacher oh we're talking about when you actually are ready to go and, and mm -hmm. people, can do, people can literally get their house built while they're here or they can literally why this thing not switching or they can literally um, when they're ready to move, move somewhere across the street and you can get a three bedroom, two bathroom house and you and someone else could split it. That's a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars. And that's for the whole year. Like somebody asked me if that was per, per month. I was like, that's only rent in, in America. It's $2,000 a month. And I'm like $2,000 a year. Because yeah. what most people do in Accra is they, they spend too much money, honestly. They spend the amount of money to where our brother, um, brother uh, Charles, explain how much you are paying for rent compared to the $2,000 that we're going to be paying. Look, I was paying $400 a month. I had a one-bedroom apartment, and it was in okay condition, but there was no backup water. Because, I mean, there were poly tanks on the roof, but the lady would never fill them. She had a borehole, but she wouldn't pay the, the plumber and electrician to hook it up. Um... What else now? Um, the power kept going out. She didn't have a generator. She kept saying, well, oh, I'm going to get one by summer. Oh. So I still was in contact with a lot of the guys that worked there. They said, it, well, it's a year now, and still there's no backup generator. So there you go, you know. So, you know, um, it, it's best to do for self. You know, it's best to have your own home in Ghana because, a lot of the landlords, they're rogue operators. I mean, seriously, like you literally have to give them a year rent up front, seriously. And if you move into a property in Ghana and there's defects or there's issues or there's decoration need to be done, hell, you better pray or you make sure they do it before you hand over the money. Because once you've moved in, they're never going to come and do any kind of work for you. And that's why they take all the money up front. A lot of them would tell you, oh, I, I want, I want uh, a two years rent. And just say you move out after a year, it's very unlikely you'll get back a year's rent from them. They'll make you live it out or you'll have to sublet the property. So I, I notice how they do businesses. The way they do businesses is, is, is literally, you know, um, <laughs> they literally make you want to lose sleep. Seriously, you have to really have nerves of steel doing business with them out there. It's really, really tough. And you have to be patient. 
you know, we really, really do need to be patient. So, you know, um, I prefer, I, I, I uh, had given my rent money all three months, one time. So I paid 1200 up front, but if you're going to rent in Ghana, I think it works out cheaper if you rent and pay a year up front. But if you do a month to month, it normally costs more. Yeah, if, so, if I do that, I will purchase the, uh, well, I would rent the um, one of the homes across from, you know, our Black Star community, because those homes are nice. Yeah, they are. And they're yeah. affordable. $1,000 for the year. Are. Nothing. Yes. yes. And so I, I would do that, mm -hmm. you know, but I would want my residency um, card first. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get your residency before you do yeah. anything. I got yeah. mine last year. You know? Yeah. So, because without the, without the Ghana card and your residency, you really can't do anything in Ghana. Any kind of transaction. It's even, you can't even open a bank account. I mean, Bamani would tell you when he first started going to Ghana, you didn't need uh, um, a Ghana card to open a bank account. Now it's kind of complicated to open a bank account without a Ghana card. Some some banks in Ghana now, even though you have the Ghana card, they're still asking for TIN numbers. Because when I was there last year, the new mandate was from the 1st of March, 2022, that TIN numbers were being phased out and the Ghana card will be your new TIN number, identification number. But when you go to the bank, they will tell you, oh, you have to have a you know but then the government's telling you one thing but then they they haven't updated the banks and they haven't even given the bank enough time to even uh upgrade their database to accept the ghana card so it's just a lot of going around circles even, even right now you have to register your your ghana sim card with your ghana card and you can't do it you have to go into a store a MTN or a Vodafone store and do biometrics. But then they text you every day to tell you, oh, you need to register your, your Ghana card or you will lose service. But you can't, you have to be there to do it. So they implement a lot of stuff, but it never works really. It's never thought out properly. They just implement stuff and it's never thought out properly. So, you know, it's just like that. They, they're trying to be like the States. You know, we, we kind of do things a little bit more streamlined here, but they don't do it like that. But yeah, just get yourself there soon, sister. Sooner the better and start living your life. Yes, I plan to. They need you there. They need you there. They need yes, teachers. My, my goal is to open a school. Yeah, they need you there. Yeah, you put too much energy into the American system that don't even appreciate you. I agree. Yeah. Kids are crazy. They want to fight with you and argue. But the children are so disciplined in, in countries like Ghana. They want to learn. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. that people in America don't want to learn. I'm just saying they're like so dedicated to, you know, when you come from a developing country, all you think about mm -hmm. is opportunities and education. That's the way we uplift ourselves. So, yeah. And then the chief would even give you land. He said he's willing to give land and give things if any of us want to do special projects that's going to benefit all of us as a community. And uh, Oh, wow. Yeah, because he gave an orphanage, uh, he gave another another school 20 uh, something acres to build a, why is this thing not switching? Uh, 20 acres to build, uh, it's called Rafiki um, School. It's um, more of like an orphanage that school. So um, uh, the, the chiefs are always open to doing those things. Um, and, uh, so that's good. That's good because that's exactly what I want to do is to, uh, to build a school. And seeing like you, my background is in IT and administration as well, as well as other things like uh, alternative medicine, but you know, but I'm significantly older, so I had more time to go to school. So you jack of all trades then? <laughs> sort of. Basically. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, you know, Hey, man, more people just need to go home, man. I mean, I don't know what the hell they're holding out for. Like, they need to see missiles start hitting the cities <laughs> before they get the message. 
I already saw the writing on the wall already. I've been seeing it, you know. I know between now and December, something else is going to go down, some other significant, you know, false flag strike or whatever. Something's going to happen anyway. I just feel it. Right now, they're, rel they're relaxing all the mandates. New York is mask free as of tomorrow, I think. You know, you don't even need to wear masks no more. Is Ghana so going to have all these things? This pandemic just, just seemed to just disappear over the night. And now people are saying it's because of Putin why it's just disappeared. <laughs> it, it, you, you know what it was, right? I think the pandemic was just a precursor to something else. And now all of this was planned out, that a war was going to happen. It was all planned out. You know, let's just get the people confused with COVID and then we'll go into war. And then after the war, there will be something else. I don't know, man. But it seems like uh, everything, is, everything planned is out. They use fear yeah. very effectively, you know. And yeah. so with the pandemic, it was fear. Yeah. And so war is fear. And yeah. Everything is fear. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 black people here in America, if if they're not going to stand up and fight the system, what other option do they have? To leave. Thank you. But when you tell most brothers and sisters, they look like they look at you like you're crazy. Mm -hmm. I ain't even no damn African nigga. I ain't even from there. <laughs> I mean, my neighbor tells me that all the time. When I talk talk to her about Africa, she gets some set with me. She keep talking about she is Cherokee Indian. I said, go, go to the reservation, see if they claim you. <laughs> You're funny, man. I said, go get some of that casino money and let me know how that goes. But even the, uh, the indigenous Indians, because I've done mm. research on that. That was part of my PhD studies. Okay. Mm. Um, they literally came out of Africa. All so right. it's, it's, they're not related to what you see on the reservations now. They were yes. black people, really dark skin yeah. with, you know, hair like ours. They were not yeah. that, yeah. but they literally came from Africa. They were the first ones there. Cause yeah. I know my mother grew up on the reservation and she's, she was Cree Indian. Mm -hmm. They were dark yeah. skin. So, yeah. but yeah, because but, you know, everybody tried to be in everything other than black. Exactly. It's self-hatred. Mm -hmm. It's self-hatred. Look, but we were taught that in school. Yeah, yeah. You know, so just to have, just to get rid of the Western mindset and get the African mindset, it takes, you have to be re-educated. Yeah, look, which on is my, what I've had to do. Doctor, yeah. on my father's side of the family, they're all African-Americans. It's the mother's side is Jamaican. And on my dad's side of the family, they are Native Americans. Mm -hmm. With long hair. My dad had long here and his mother had long hair. I have the pictures to prove it. Mm -hmm. But I don't really, I don't really dwell on that though. Because how that gonna help me in my situation? My grandma didn't get no check. No. I needed my dad. So what's the point? So what? And, and plus they had to reclassify as Negro. Exactly. And, yeah. and 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 the funny thing about it, right? A lot of people who see these copper color looking Indian people, they're not indigenous to this place. They're from side, they're Mongols. Cause you know, China and Russia border. These people actually live at the border of Ch China and Russia. They're Mongol people, they're mixed breed people. They're a Mongol race. They cross over because as you know, Alaska used to be part of Russia and it was mm -hmm. sold to the United States back in the early 1900s for about $10 million or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but those people came over via that way. You see, if you if you go to if you go to Alaska, from Alaska, Russia's not that far away anymore. I stayed in Alaska for see? a couple of years. So you and know I'm not walked. talking no nonsense here, right? From once you're in Alaska, a rush is just up the road, isn't it? It's not depending on what part. Yeah, depending on what part. Because it's because mm -hmm. as far as I remember. Russia is a little bit bigger than the United States, a really, really big country. It's massive. Yeah, I think half of the country they can't live in because it's so cold. Exactly. So they got extreme heat and they have extreme cold. 
in, in, in Russia. But they got different types of funny looking people there. They got Asian looking kind of people there. And that's where the old Mongol type come from. And they came over to United States and white people classified them as Native Americans, but they're not. Look, I, I used to even work with a white boy a few years ago. He was telling me he's Native American. But look, Based I knew on the very Dawes much. Act, you know, because a lot of them came in via the Dawes Act, you know, $5 Indians. Exactly. Yeah, but, but remember this, 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 um, the Zoom session is being recorded. <laughs> Oh yes, perfect. And uh, make sure we just say, make sure we don't say anything um, that we shouldn't say. But mm. I'm wondering why my thing is not switching back to me. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, yeah, it's uh, one of those things. Yeah, let's make sure. Um, I want to make sure that we get beautiful, nice, clean, positive recordings and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But uh, brother Charles, always good. Um, appreciate your input. Let me see if anyone else even want to chime in on anything, or if you want to dialogue with anybody else. Um, family, Barely anybody, anybody here? When you started the Zoom call, it was about eleven or twelve. Now we're down to eight. Ah, uh, yes, and uh, it's just I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe the Super Bowl is on. I'm just joking. Uh, and maybe something else is going on. Like you mentioned, uh, people are distracted by anything. But the good thing about technology that we have is, you know, we have live videos. And then we also have the, the recorded videos that yeah, uh, people are distracted. That, that shared. So, you know, um, and then, you know, the details is the same kind of thing that we repeat, repeat, but trying to let everyone know that we made ourselves available for conference calls all of the time. And it's just up to individuals to just chime in. So family, anyone else that's on the group uh, chat that would like to um, make a statement, say anything, or like to share anything? No, and I was even checking my phone to see if anything is going on, but it's all good to do. Uh, let me see I, who we got here. All right, so family, I'm going to reach out to a few people. Uh, if you don't want to speak, it, it's all good. But even if you can just share some information on why you're interested in joining us on the uh, Black Star Pan-African community. So where are the new people who joined the organization? Who are the new people? Are they on, are they on the call now? Um, can't say, don't even know. Um, you know me, I do, I do my best to send emails, text message, WhatsApp, Facebook, and as much as I can send throughout the day. Uh, but it's all good. I do appreciate the people who always make the live call and things like that so we can talk in direct. And... Hi, Brother Bomani. Hey, greetings. Uh, <laughs> greet introduce yourself to our family of Black Star. So you want to be a part of the community. I'm just saying hi. This is Sister Kubi. You know me. <laughs> New York. Absolutely. Um, Same hi. Uh, yes, uh, I'm seen, yeah. I didn't know that you're interested in our community. Uh, information. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm always interested in everything. I'm listening to. Okay. I'm tired. So what do you get from the things that we've talked about in presentation from the beginning? I wasn't on on the beginning. You know, I always have a problem, the tech. But I came on like the latter part and everything sound positive and sound really, really good. Uh, yes, and uh, that's what we do in this, organizing ourselves with positive movements and letting everyone know that it's all about our children and all about the future of you know, our race and everything. Mm -hmm. Everyone on this call probably have lived their life and have done well for themselves in life. And you know, I want us to be that generation where we just leave a legacy for our children to build upon versus them having to say, try to fill out these weird applications to get jobs from the Indians, the Chinese, the Lebanese and all these other yeah. people. Oh boy. Especially yeah. when, they, you know, because we don't know how, white, how long white people are going to be around. And, you know, white people are typically nice. You know, they'll give you a job. I can't yeah, right. say about other people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, right. I almost didn't come on because I know you said something about you was coming on the 20th. And then all of a sudden I saw this a little earlier and I said, oh, well, let me check on just in case. Oh, it's a different conference call. This uh, conference call is about, uh, it's a public call yes. to reach out to people who want to learn about um about land investment and how to go through the process of recognizing what's legal and what's fraud. I just feel it's my duty since I know so much about land investments and yes. I'm in a world of knowledge, especially since we have hired all, we have access to all these attorneys. I'll just be, I'll be picking their brain and reading stuff. So that's mm. 
for that. Now the one on the twentieth is for our, you know, our, you know, our tour conference call. Mm -hmm. So break them into separate conference call. Uh, one for investments and one for conference call. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. one for investment and one for tours. Well, okay, because every time I look up and I see you and I'm around, I say, okay, let me check out and see what's going on. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm one of them people. Um, you know, I have over three thousand videos on YouTube. And yes. you know, we do a ridiculous amount of presentations. So I'm always going to tell people like we made ourselves available and even yeah, after no calls, Yeah, no excuse. Because every time I look around, talk. right? Because every time I look around, I see you anywhere. I'm popping up to see <laughs> what's going on. A lot of stuff I'm laughing at because some of our folks are something else. I don't even have to tell you that. <laughs> you know, you talk about especially the ones who doesn't don't like to read information. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And all the information is there. That's the thing with me. If the information wasn't there, that's one thing. But everything is there. It's no excuse. And plus, you make your time available. It's no excuse. What they want you to, the feed, you know, breastfeed them. Uh, okay, sometimes I think so. Um, but uh, but yeah, but yeah, I don't mind uh, being on the phone with someone, and we you know we do a presentation from phone to phone, and we go through everything. Uh, right. It's a little more time. Even the long list of people that I have, I've been spending uh, each day trying to call ten to twenty people. Uh, because, you know, a lot of people call me and they say they want to do this, do that. And then I have them on an the email list. So I'll send the emails out. But I realize that people are probably getting more emails and then some emails are missing. So I try to just make a call and reach out to them. But it, you get burned out uh, and you're hoping that people can actually call you sometimes and reach out mm -hmm. to you and things mm -hmm. like that. So, uh, but, and, you know, then maybe that would give me a day off. Instead of working seven days a week, I can maybe work six days a week. Okay. Well, I call and keep in touch, but I try not to overdo it because I know you're busy too and you do have a life. And I know I have a life too. But yeah, as often as I can, I will be in touch. When I'm here, I don't really have a life. I just, only other than taking care of my little boy, making sure you go to school and do right. How's he doing? Tell him I say hello. Oh, he's in there playing his video games with his friends. <laughs> well, when is he doing homework? <laughs> I always ask him about homework. I was like, that's right. Yeah, when I spend it now. Yeah, I always ask him, do you, get, do you guys get any homework? And uh, it's just unbelievable. Uh, yeah, because all... especially math. If you come up and tell me there's no math homework, I got a lot of questions about that now. Yeah, um, and I've, even sometimes I force him, like, let's sit down and go through some math problems and some stuff like that. That's you know, right. How much he did already and things like that. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, it's uh, it's unbelievable. And, and I, you know, I, ultimately, I've, I can't sit here and blame anything on the school system because it's always yeah. to educate our children. But you know, most of the time, our children are at school for a very long period of time. Yes. And they're tired when they get home. When they get home, they're trying mm -hmm. to chill. But and when they're there, they're bored about everything. Everything is boring. Everything is boring. Oh, yeah, that's the word that come out of his mouth. Oh, a lot of kids say that. And I said, well, you don't think it's boring for us to be up there with you all, too? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm over this with a comeback, so I know how that is. You know, I'm in New York City, so I know about the system up here, especially. Yeah, I remember school. They've done that. That was um, very interesting. Mm -hmm. I remember going to high school. I thought it was a, I thought it was like a fashion, like a fashion operation. Mm -hmm. was, and but um, but I was lucky to get a technical school, so I was able to learn something. And, and yes, that's good. Because you know, back then that was one thing, but you just see how it is now. They got so much other stuff to go through. I mean, come on now, LGBTQWHC, all kind of foolishness, man. And we talking about back when, even with the pre-K and stuff, you see things, the pre-K and the elementary, because like I said, I'm, I'm around. So I can, I can speak, especially with the Bronx, I can definitely speak. Yeah. About that, a lot of the schools here. Been there, done that. So I know. And that's ultimately why we're, you know, we're building the community to where someone like myself, they will have all of this experience of uh, this from working on, I've worked on all kind of technical stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. cars airplanes computers electronic system even these tvs here and these printers all these things and this is so much that you can share with your generation and things mm -hmm. like that but uh it's a it's a liability from you know it's a liability here if you're trying to do certain things so but when we're there in the community i can have children from 13 to 19 and we can educate them and we can put them in a world where you know they're, they're, they can compete because doing the whole uh doing the whole covet era now, you, now, the children of Asia, they weren't even playing. If there were no school, they changed, they made all of the TV channels school channels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Their children was, you know, getting educated. So we have to think about that um, based on the situation of the last two years. It, I, I think it really set our children back and we're going to have to step our game up to, 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 you know, to educate them so they could be up to speed. Mm -hmm. Well, then, and then you could help some of us that are not tech, you know, 
<laughs> tech artists. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's old school. I need help, and I'll be the first one to say when it comes to tech, I still don't know how to copy and paste. Yeah, so it's <laughs> not saying. We focus on 17 help. to 19, but it's all it's education for me is always all it's always what we call in Jamaica all age. That's right. That's so right. Lifetime old, learner. That's something. what we call it. Lifetime learner. You're students okay. for life. And I need help when it comes to the technical. I'll tell you in a minute. Help. H-E-L-P. <laughs> as long as you're good at following, as long as you're good at following directions, you're good. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder about that one. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but definitely appreciate you just um, checking out what we're doing and everything. But now, what do you think of the vision of the community in in, in general? I think it's really it like it will be like what we say one shot deal. You're gonna have a post office, the school, the medical facility. I don't think you left out anything. Uh, yes, or you left out very little because it sounds great. Uh, you yes, started from the ground. And then there's other aspects of the town where uh, we're, yeah. we're going to have your traditional stuff in the town, uh, which the chief and his, uh, you know, his other people are going to work on. Uh, but mm -hmm. what they wanted to see, they wanted to see development. So other, a mm -hmm. bunch of other people are developing, including the, the, house, the business house that we have across from our community. Mm -hmm. uh, that is one of the biggest development there. They're throwing up houses. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're also going to be doing other things. So together, um, and what I'm talking with the, everyone in the town, because I've had even a meeting with a few of the chiefs and I just, you know, and you know, I, I go into my conversation, you know, and I'm always telling them about the future. Cause I'm always telling people like, yo, we lived our lives. Let's not do, mm -hmm. you know, let, let's put our children in a better situation. So usually people see that and things that I tell them that it's mm -hmm. not just talk. It's, you know, we're literally going to put the action in place, but mm -hmm. we all have to work together. So the chiefs all agreed to it. And even we did a nice little meeting with uh, our chief and other chiefs and, and, and community members. And we're gonna do more of these things as a way to bridge our connection together uh, because it's one of those things where you can't just show up somewhere in Africa and just expect people to understand you and get you. You know, Because mm -hmm. most of our people are not taught about the African history and slave trades and things like that. In America, same situation, but those are- You got that right, even on the college country. level. And we got people still thinking Africa is a country. <laughs> Like even on the college, and that Nigeria is the capital. Nigeria's the capital. That's funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I got so many things to say. I just can't do it all now. <laughs> but it's a lot. Also, as far as um, um, you're thinking about what community centers and parks, because that's one of the things seem like it's lacking. You know, parks and recreational activities for the children, small yeah. kids. And you know, we go, we we we're in New York City, because you know, you know, how New York don't play around. You got parks everywhere. Because I remember. The, my favorite thing we used to us going on going down the street and going to the park and playing basketball and that was like my fondest memory you know it got me uh -huh. to where you know we just out there just a bunch of you know young teenagers just playing basketball and yeah and handball like, don't forget handball and all that you know and uh, out there playing baseball I mean that's what I love about New York and even though double judge. the concrete jungle they still had parks <laughs> yes double judge all those different things uh -huh. you know even if we just playing on the block playing you know, flag football on the block or mm -hmm. other things. But, you know, trying to create a better organized environment for our children. Mm -hmm. and, that. and so a lot of things I've learned in America is where I get all of this from. And I tell people that, you know, let's, let's use the blessings of what we have in America and understand America has been mm -hmm. different, different situations for us, but the, the blessings that, we you know, we have had in you know, mm -hmm. is what we can use to, to you know, be a part of the future of Africa. Well, some of this old school stuff coming back, like the skateboards that was brown when I was a kid, and the scooters. My brothers them used to make them. The scooters, and you know, mm -hmm. skate is always one of those popular things. But we're not gonna find a skate rink somewhere in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But the skateboards. I mean, so many different things. You know, we are creative people. So, you remember the polo stick? Polo that's stick for your time. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's what the, 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 we used to just use the. Uh, yeah, I guess a tennis ball to play baseball. What okay, bad, you talk about badminton. Ball? You talking about stick ball? Yeah, stick ball, badminton. We could go down the line. Yeah, that was, yeah, I was, yeah, I was, yeah. I lived in New York in the nineties. You know, we used to do all those things. The teenagers right in, right in the block. Fond well, we did that down south. You know, you, don't forget, I'm a Georgia peach, so we did a lot of that down south, Georgia. It's it's amazing that you live in New York and I live in Georgia. <laughs> and yeah, right. And you know, you know, I tell you, I'm a stone with Gullah Geechee, Savannah. But I'm two hundred. Well, Savannah's two hundred and thirty-five miles from you. Remember, I told you that we're on the coast. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've been to Savannah, um, and I saw them big plantation homes in Savannah. I was like, wow. Yeah, right? Really? Did Did you go to Buford also? Now, I've never, never been to Buford, Georgia. Oh, no, Buford, South Carolina. 
That's some oh, fire Carolina, Gullah Gucci. Oh, no, I never oh. been to South Carolina. Oh, okay. Because my family, some of the ones started the Gullah Gullah Festival. They're known throughout Buford. See, we got a, we got so much uh, co historical culture in America, and that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. we have the people that some of our people, you know, it's just it's important that we connect, you know, you know, connect the you know connect the diaspora in Africa and connect all of our people. Basically, connect our people you know, around the world together. We, I did tell you that our roots was filmed in Savannah. On it was that, filmed in Savannah. Roots. I think I told you that. I think you know that already. Um, not necessarily. Like, just, even myself, there's a lot of things, you know, you just don't. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. That was, that's a perfect film. location to film it because, you know, it has all Yeah, yeah well, a lot of people oh. thought it was Africa. It was there. And then if you if you remember the beginning and they had the African dancers, I don't know if you remember. You, you were too young. Anyway, a lot of my friends, they got an area. I know you heard about it in South Carolina. It's not too far from Beaufort, Sheldon. I got a lot of friends there. And they're keeping with the um, Yoruba African tradition. Olatunji African Village. And a lot of them were the people that did the dancing in the beginning of the scene. And then the, the guys that captured Kunta Kente was on our football team at Savannah State. It was a college when I was there. It's a university now. Man, when you see me, you're gonna laugh because I wanted to be in Roots and the white woman told me I wasn't dark enough. But that's another story we'll talk about. I'll have you laugh. And once you see me, you're gonna fall out. You're not gonna believe it. You, you are full of good stuff, man. <laughs> You are full of good stuff. We can't wait till we all meet you in, in, in May. Right, that's why sometimes, you know, I'm like quiet and then you start easing me to talk and I know how I can go on. So sometimes I try to lay back. <laughs> all right, well, we'll appreciate, you know, you and I will definitely talk some more. Let me see if anybody oh, yeah. has anything else to share before we close family. I appreciate everybody's time. I don't want to uh, keep us here all uh, too long. Okay. All right, uh, we have Jay and uh, Sherry and... I already talked to um, our brother John Kofi already. So Jay or Sherry, would you like to share anything before we close the call? Uh, all you have to do is just uh, unmute yourself at the top. Hi, everyone. No, I'm just listening. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, <Maybe> uh, <laughs> but um, Bumani, I'll get in contact with you. <laughs> okay, perfect. Absolutely. And, and for those who um, want to ever just reach out to me directly, um, you know, you can just reach out to me directly, send me a message on WhatsApp, and, um, you know, we can make arrangement to talk either immediately or just anytime. Uh, because I do understand how this thing works. Not everybody join conference calls and not everybody talk on conference calls, but uh, it's, you know, kind of like we're doing a little bit of everything to make sure that we connect as many people as possible. So appreciate the people joining and listening and appreciate people listening to the playback, uh, this, you know, everyone just send a message and communicate with us. And, you know, we have lots available for you and uh, we can help you write down a game plan to move into Africa. The only thing I don't want to see us doing is what some of the people have done before where they just be on an individual mission there and then they run into certain things. And next thing you know, uh, they lose a bunch of money and things don't work out for themselves in, in Ghana and then they have to come back after giving up everything that they have worked hard for all their life. That's the most painful thing. That's right. So the, the solution we came up with uh, was to this uh, do group economics and build this community and build other communities like that to where we just operate more as a union or you know or as a unit. So that's what we're recommending to people, and that will fix the issue of our repatriation and make it more the sound and organized. Amen. All right, uh, so perfect. So um, family, once again, appreciate everybody uh, joining us and everything. And uh, thank you for everyone's support on us, building us community. I'm very excited that we have been able to just put together something to where we can be an example for others to come to how to do certain things. You know, and we appreciate Marcus Garvey and all the people before and after him who literally inspired and educate us on what we need to do in this generation and that's what we're going to do for our next generation. And we're just going to keep on putting more things in place. And then sooner or later, what you'll see, family, you know, even if it's the next 10 to 50 years, we'll see a united Africa and a united uh, African people around the globe together as a unit, regardless of where we are, which is going to be called true Pan-Africanism, or just really the definition of what Pan-Africanism is supposed to be. All right, so with um, that being stated, family, um, once again, Appreciate everybody's energy and thank you for joining us on our Black Star Pan-African Community public uh, conference call.
Uh, everyone take care and enjoy the night and we'll keep in touch. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah.